We were told three partial meltdowns, don't worry about it. Now we know it was 100% core melt in all three reactors. Um, Japan is, by orders of magnitude, many times worse than Chernobyl. Never in my life did I think that six nuclear reactors would be at risk. Well, Tepco is like the little Dutch boy. All of a sudden, we have cracks in the dike. You put a finger here, you put a finger there, and all of a sudden, new leaks start to occur, and they're overwhelmed, literally making it up as they go along. We're in totally uncharted territories. You get any nuclear engineering book, look at the last chapter, and this scenario is not contained in the last chapter of any nuclear engineering textbook on the planet Earth. So they're making it up as they go along, and we are the guinea pigs for this science experiment that's taking place. All radiation is damaging, it's cumulative, each dose you get adds to your risk of getting cancer. Within days of the Fukushima Daiichi catastrophe beginning, we were getting uh, fallout coming down in rain in the United States, not in insignificant quantities. And also, of course, the, uh, the seafood, um, not only does the ocean's currents bring the radioactivity this way, but also uh, the sea life itself, the bluefin tuna, uh, migrated from Japan to North America and carried the radioactive cesium in its flesh over here. Wow, not a good time to be eating tuna. The food chain remains contaminated for hundreds or thousands of years and we'll start seeing lung cancer and leukemia I think two to five years from now. And then solid cancers will start appearing um, 15 to 60, 70 years later. So the ace up the sleeve is, of the nuclear industry is the incubation time for cancer. It takes a long time for cancers to develop once you have inhaled or been exposed to these radioactive elements. And no cancer identifies its origin. And so there is already a level of cancer in society, but it's going to increase dramatically. The problem is not really under control. It Doesn't will not it? be under control for, it's estimated, between 40 and 100 years from now. There's no way to clean it up. They say 40 years, but they can't clean it up. They can't. And the site's still unstable and vulnerable to natural disasters. If there is another earthquake, a serious one, 6, 7, 8 or 9 magnitude, that would rattle all these 10, 1,060 tanks. It would rattle the, the, the damaged cores, spent fuel, who, whose structures have already weakened. Yes. That's a potential very, very serious threat. Approximately 300 tons of water was filtering through the site until early this month, becoming laced with radioactive materials and then seeping into the sea. Another factor is the ever-increasing amount of water accumulating inside damaged infrastructure. Once it makes its way into reactor buildings, it mixes with radioactive isotopes for months, TEPCO workers have been pumping up 400 tons of water every day and storing it in tanks on site. Uh, the, there is 1,060 tanks, stainless steel water tanks, that are holding the water which they keep pumping into the, into the uh, damaged reactors and the uh, uh, spent fuel storage pools. From the air, the scale of the problems at Fukushima become clear. The growing mass of storage tanks now dwarfs the plant itself. More than a million tons of highly radioactive water is now stored here. But the tanks have been hastily built. They're made of steel plates, bolted together, rather than welded. Last week, workers detected a major leak in one of those tanks. About 300 tons of water escaped, releasing several quadrillion becquerels of radioactive particles. Experts have often pointed out how vulnerable they are to damage. The tanks, though, have been put together very quickly. There's no guarantee they'll last. Their seals are made of rubber, and the joints and, and bolts are corroding, and they may last not more than five years. So the tank farm has grown dramatically, and it's on the hill. 
Of course, the problem is because it's on the hill, the um, water flows down. And if there's an earthquake, all of these pipes are held together with plastic piping. Not much different than what you've got on a swimming pool. So the plastic pipe will, will, will um, snap, and that water will just run right down that roadway directly into the ocean. And how long the contamination has been leaking into the water? Very likely since the uh, explosions and the meltdown at uh, Fukushima Daiichi in March of uh, 2011. Wow, that, that is quite a long time. Now, how much and what sort of radiation is leaking into the Pacific? I know there's all different types, so if you can explain that right. in a little detail. Well, clearly what we've seen now is the movement of radioactive hydrogen, tritium, uh, which uh, is a uh, mobile uh, radioactive isotope, but clearly um, radioactive cesium-134, 137, strontium-90. We're seeing a full range of radioactive contaminants now moving, which indicate that uh, the damaged cores of these reactors, the meltdowns themselves, uh, have, are now contributing to the contamination of the Pacific Ocean and groundwater that's moving at about a, a rate of a 300 to 400 gal uh, metric tons uh, per day. So The radiation has been leaking into the water and polluting the fish continuously for the last two years. Radioactive iodine-129, its half-life is 17 million years, plus strontium, plus cesium, plus tritium, and I could go on and on and on. If it gets into the sea, the algae concentrated hundreds of times, then the crustaceans concentrated hundreds of times, then the little fish, then the big fish, then us because we stand on the apex of the food chain. You can't taste these radioactive elements, you can't see them, and you can't smell them. They're silent. This graphic shows the gradual contamination of the Pacific Ocean due to leaks of radioactive water from the crippled Fukushima nuclear plant in Japan. The simulation, which was run by a German marine research institute, shows the entire Pacific waters being polluted by radioactive water in just six years. The fuel core of Unit 4 at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. More than 1,500 fuel rods sit in a damaged storage pool 30 meters above ground. Yeah, the, the amount of radioactivity within the, in the rods themselves is about 14,000 times that of the, the Hiroshima bomb. We are dealing with diabolical energy. E equals mc squared. It's the energy that blows up nuclear bombs. Einstein said, nuclear power is a hell of a way to boil water. They need to remove those fuel rods from the pool because if there's another earthquake, building four would go down probably and the, all those fuel rods would be exposed to the air and they would burn and they would release ten times more radiation or cesium than was released at Chernobyl. Huge amounts and pollute much of Japan and the Northern Hemisphere. So we're in a nuclear crisis at the moment. If there's another earthquake and Building 4 collapses, which contains the cooling pool with fresh fuel, I'm going to evacuate my family from Boston. So they've put a crane on top of that building, which is shaky anyway. And they're going to lift the fuel assemblies out one by one with the crane and it will be done manually. Normally those rods are removed by computer control with millimetres to spare. It's a very delicate operation. The fuel rods must be kept submerged and must not touch each other or break. Nuclear experts warn any mishaps could cause an explosion many times worse than that one here in March 2011. Because if several rods touch each other you could reach criticality and the whole fuel pool could go critical or if the rods break as they're being lifted out, large amounts of radiation would escape from the rods and the area would have to be evacuated, meaning that if the area is evacuated, the continuous operation of cooling five spent fuel pools and three melted cores would stop. <laughs> Need I go on? A study just published by the United States government reports the discovery that low-dose radiation is so safe 
Evacuations from future nuclear disasters may be unnecessary. If another event like Fukushima occurs, the public could be allowed to live in the fallout zones, spared from the inconvenience of relocation and compensation for damages.